Hi, I'm Mark from GK Tutor, and I'm here with Practical Machinist to start a new series. Now this series, we're going to make a part on a lathe from scratch with all the different features. We're looking at 10, 10 and 12 different features on this part, and each time we have a lesson, we're going to do another one of those features. So this is all programmed in FANUC G-Code, and I'm using a generic version of G-Code, maybe slightly different from your machine, because this is a generic version that makes learning individual versions of G-Code that's on your machine much, much easier. Okay, so let's make a start. Right, so this is the part that we're going to program. Now this drawing and um, some example programs are over on my website, and there's a link below in the description to go over and get these slides. Okay, so this is the part that we're going to make. Now it's in metric this time, and we've got a lot of different features here. We've got external screw thread there with the M20 fine thread. We've got lots of grooves, so we're gonna need a grooving cycle. We've got some internal work there, plus an internal groove. And that big bore at the back there, I'll probably bore out with a U-drill. And then go in with a finished bore. So I think that's the main features that we need to look at here. We've got a through drilled hole there, that's 10 millimeters diameter. So that doesn't need to be bored, that just needs to be drilled. And then the back end there, that's a bit more accurate. So that needs to be finished bored. So that's the part. So let's go ahead and start laying this out. So I'm gonna start off by laying out the header. So the header is um, where we have all our information from the program. And ideally, we should be able to put all the information there so we don't need setup sheets. Now, this is not always the way. A lot of companies like the setup sheet thing, but we want enough information in our header to get rid of those setup sheets. So imagine making this part without a setup sheet. All the information is right here. So that's what our aim for is making this header. Okay, let's have a look, see how this looks. So our first line is our program number, and that's a letter O at the beginning. Now it's O followed by three zeros and four. So it's program number four, and that's how we write it. And we end up there, a bit there in the brackets, that is an operator's note. So sealed cap is the name of the part. So I'm popping out an operator's note next to the program number so the operator knows what this program is. Now at the very end of that line, we have an end of block command, that semicolon there. That tells the machine we finish reading this line and to move on to the next. So next up, I like to put my name to it. That way, if there's any issues with the program, if any updates need to be made, the operator can find me and know who it was that originally programmed this to make things a little bit easier. And that's in an operator's note also. So the machine can't read anything that's in brackets, and most of this header is in brackets. I also put the date on there, so we can check version numbers, etc. Now, if we do have setup sheets to go along with this, they would tie into the setup sheets so we know that we're on the correct version. I also state what machine I'm programming because each machine can be slightly different. In um, my machine shop, we've probably got 10 different types of FANUC running at once, all on different machines. Now it's um, all generally the same, but there are slight variations between machines. Sometimes, for example, Morisiki like to add in their own codes, same as Makino. Okay, so that tells an operator what machine this was originally meant for. So if they try and load into a different machine, it might not work. And then I have a list of tooling. And again, I do that as like a sub menu in my header here. I put tooling in brackets. So the first line here, the first tool we're gonna to be using is a roughing tool. So we're gonna be roughing out the majority of this shape here, this profile. So here, the information I give it is N1, which is a search function. In the old days, we used to number each individual line. These days, we tend to use them as search functions. So I can type N1 on the FANUC controls, push a down arrow, and it's gonna search through until it finds this end number. And then after that, I've got my tool number, T0101, and I like to pair that with the end number as well. So tool one would go into um, N1 also. And then finally, um, within these operator note brackets here, I've got um, a note saying what this operation is. It's, we're using a roughing tool. So that's um, identified our tooling. So the next line, I want to identify the tip of that tool. Because if we use different grades of tips each time we set this job, we might not get the same results. We might have dimensional inaccuracies or surface finish issues. So we always want to be using the same tip and the same tooling every time this job's run. So talk about tool holders. Underneath the tip, I put in a tool holder I'm using that's holding that tip. That way, 
future operators got all the information they need to be able to set that tool. So once we've got all the information for our roughing tool in there, we can move on to the next tool. So the next tool is a finished hand tool. And I'm putting this under tool two and offset two, and also N number two as well. So we can search for that N two if we require. I'm not gonna go down and list each tip and each holder for each individual tool as we go, because you know that's the intention there. So I'm just gonna go through and list all the tools now. Now, um, if you don't have setup sheets, if this is your only form of information, I would highly recommend adding all the tool holders and tips within this. Okay, so next up is our groove tool. So we're gonna be using a one millimeter groove tool for that little groove at the back of the front thread there, that M20. So um, I'm putting that in tool three, offset three. And my screw cutting tool, because we're going to be producing the M20 thread, so I'm gonna need all the tips and tool holders for that setup. So that goes in tool four. Tool five is our two millimeter groove tool. This is those external grooves on the main shaft there. So we're gonna be using a groove cycle to produce those. For that center holder, before we can drill it, we're gonna to need to center drill it. So I'm gonna go in with a number two BS center drill there and um, machine the center for that before we drill it. And then go in with just a 10 millimeter long series drill and peck drill out that long drill hold through the middle there. So again, we're gonna be using a peck cycle for this because that is 50 millimeters deep with a 10 mil hole. I'm predicting we're gonna get some swarf issues. So um, I'm gonna peck drill that. And then finally, at once that drilled hole's done, we can part it off. So all the parting off tool information is there. So now we're gonna assume we're gonna reverse that around. So we're holding on the diameter with the grooves on it. That way we can start working on the back face of this part. And we're gonna go straight in with a 40 millimeter U-drill and start roughing out all that material for that bore at the back. And once that's done, we're gonna go in and finish, turn that with a finished boring bar. I'm gonna pop that in tool 10. And then we've got that two millimeter internal groove there on that corner inside the bore. So we're gonna look at machine and that, and that's gonna be in tool 11. And then I have an end of block. Now I do this to separate these up. Now, quite often I might do this just before the tooling uh, info at the top. So we can separate it into sections. So it makes it easier to read. So after I've got my end of block break there, so we've got a little gap in my uh, program, we're gonna put down our start pullout length. So this is the initial length of the material hanging out the chuck uh, before we start machining it. And we generally do this with a ruler because the first part of our roughing tool is going to be facing off. So we don't need to be highly accurate for this. We can just use a steel rule, measure 55 degrees roughly from the chuck, as long as it's not under and it's no more than a millimeter over, it will be fine. Okay, so that's our start pullout length. So then I had another, uh, end of block afterwards before the main program starts. Then like keep the header separate from the main program. Makes things easy to see, easy to reference. So that's my header program. That's how I write a header. Now this slide as well is available below on my website um, to download so you've got a reference as we're building this part. Okay, so that's the end of the first section of our part here. As we move on, so our next video is going to be our rough cycle, and we're gonna program a complete roughing cycle to program this profile. And we're gonna do that in the next lesson. So I'm Mark from G-Code Tutor. If you want to know more about learning G-Code, CAD CAM, Machine Shop, Maths, I've got lots of courses over on my website at gcodetutor.com. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook under the same name.